so your role at Gartner, you know, Gartner is one company that it has, you know, this this entire research. And ever since I came into AI, this this space has been very exciting for me. Mm-hmm. But uh, I have to con- confess that I myself don't understand exactly what goes on there, right? I mean, I do have an idea, but today I'm going to take this opportunity to understand this a lot better. Speak of AI in general, right? And how it's I have seen its use in the industry. So there are two aspects. to ai one is the applied ai and then there is actual ai research mm-hmm. uh, so different organizations tap into uh, these two different aspects of ai depending upon how advanced they are in terms of being digital businesses so if you look at organizations such as google facebook yahoo all these organizations they they are into both applied ai as well as ai research uh but other organizations are just building upon the models that are already available out there for ai and that's called applied ai so whatever algorithms have already been built they just use that towards uh, use cases or applications in the industry mm-hmm. um and mostly uh you know you will see majority of ai professionals being uh, in the field of applied ai rather than ai research uh, a lot of ai research also happens in educational institutes as well um so when it comes to ai uh, while while it is a very glamorous term and you know people are like you can achieve uh, the skies and the universe with it one needs to take all the power of ai with a pinch of salt as well there's a lot of rigor that goes on behind these ai models um the biggest one being manual tagging right uh, for example we say fa- facial recognition just to identify that a uh, face is a female's face or a male's face there would be i don't know millions of faces that would be tagged that this is a female this is a male and an ai model would be trained uh using that and somebody there is some person sitting down and tagging those so that that's not the glamorous part of it but leads to the glamorous part of the applications uh right um, so uh, there are a lot of different applications people say that ai is going to take over a lot of different jobs i don't feel that would be the case because you know there's a lot of uh, compliances one needs to follow all that is going to be manual facebook and all these organizations have big compliance teams in place to make sure their ai models are working well um and you must have heard of it in a lot of news um so uh, while ai is touted to take a lot of jobs away from people but i don't think that's going to happen anytime soon I think your main point is that oversight is always going to be provided by humans so that's exactly where there is always going to be scope for people to come in that part yes. can never be automated so humans are going to get involved with ai research they are going to build ai models they are going to tag uh, you know images text voice uh, to make sure ai models work well and eventually they are the ones who are going to build the use cases as well and also keep in check all the models that are being used towards these use cases so that's the compliance part of it and this is supported by research i, I think it was mckinsey was that came out with a research which said that sure ai will de- uh, displace jobs but there are more the, the number of jobs that will be created because of ai is always pegged to be greater than the ones that will be mm-hmm. replaced so i there might not be a lot of reason to worry as of now not as of now obviously uh, even though you know uh, leaders such as jack ma say that how do you prepare your children for the future because ai is going to take over everything make them you know uh, go towards creative fields more than logical fields because logic will be taken over by ai but i don't think that's going to happen in the next 10 years at least <laughs> so now at gartner your designation is that you are the director at the quantitative quantitative analytics and data science in the research and advisory right now, uh, can, can you explain to me the the role that you're in and through that i would like uh, you know others to understand what kind of roles exist in the field of ai what are the job opportunities that one can take on if somebody decides to step into 
this field. A lot of organizations are investing uh, a lot into acquiring data sets. Um, and there's a lot of uh, media hype around data being the new oil. So, and a lot of digitization of businesses is happening. That means a lot of data is getting collected, uh, but there's a lot that needs to go into making sense of the data that is getting collected towards a lot of different things, right? Uh, and like I said earlier, I cannot speak about what exactly happens at Gartner, but the whole point is these data sets go into advising business strategy at a lot of different levels. Um, speaking overall of you know the different experiences I've had. For example, while I was at Intel in the US, there was data collected from the machines, from the products that were being built at Intel on a 24 hour basis, right? You had huge amounts of data getting collected there. What would that amount to? That would amount to making sure that the machines are running within certain specifications, right? That the product uh, dimensions are within certain specifications, just to make sure that the final product that you are getting out to the customer is to uh, a certain set of specifications you have put in place to make sure that the product is running properly, the processes are running properly. So that's a lot of big data out there that you need to mine so that's one uh, then specific to ai there, there's a lot of ai being used specifically for text analytics uh, because a lot of organizations uh, consumers customers uh, and i'm talking about b2b customers they are collecting a lot of data from their end consumers and customers but uh, how to make sense of that data, a lot of AI algorithms go into that. Uh, and like I said, AI algorithms need to be trained as well uh, using you know, well-known data sets as to tag data sets. For example, if, if you would take uh, the example of say a tourism board in some of, uh, country, and that tourism board wants to understand how travelers to their country perceive that country. And there's a lot of data available on a lot of different sites like TripAdvisor um, and uh, other, you know, clear trip. There are a lot of different places where uh, travelers would go and talk about a certain destination to its social media in general. And you could mine all that data because that, that's also a big effort to make uh, mine all that data, store all that data, and then start extracting themes about, you know, when, when people are talking about that destination, what exactly are they speaking of? Are they speaking of, of the, uh, you know, safety of, of that country, that it wasn't safe when they went there? So uh, that also captures the sentiment to a certain extent. So what are the main topics people are talking about? So that would advise a tourism board on what they need to focus on uh, for their country. And in general, they, they can capture the sentiment as well of, of the travelers towards that uh, country. Over a period of time, they could do trend analysis on that data. And all this sentiment analysis uh, is, is done using AI algorithms, right? Uh, there is pre-tagged data with, which would say, okay, this, this text means that people are talking positively or uh, this text means that people are talking negatively. So that's one of the use cases uh, where a big data set could be used. And there are a lot of different data sets that can be used towards a lot of different use cases, essentially. So uh, these, this is some of uh, the work that I've done in the past. Uh, similarly, you know, uh, even at my organization, we, we do a lot of text analytics. We do a lot of quantitative data analytics towards the end of understanding the consumers and advising our customers. To get to the role that you you are in, you have a very, you've had a very strong educational background uh, in mm -hmm. engineering and data science. You did your BTech from IIT Kanpur, then your MS is from the University of Illinois, and then you've mm -hmm. done a management program in data science from ISP, followed by a PhD from Northwestern University. Um, now, for others um, who have other people who want to get into AI, 
what kind of qualifications or degrees do you think are required um, in the current uh, hiring situation? I mean, the market looks really good for analytics and data science professionals, right? Uh, one thing that a lot of organizations find missing is while people know how to use tools and technologies well, uh, they, they are unable to, you know, draw the insights towards advising a business that's the missing piece and that requires a lot of uh, you know background knowledge about businesses how businesses function how different industries function so that that uh, is what the businesses find missing uh, i know a lot of it professionals in india aspire to get into data science and um, you know data engineering and ai while they they would run the models very efficiently uh, I think the focus of these professionals should also be, you know, just not about mining the data, but also using that data towards insights. That insights is the missing piece that the business side of the world is missing from professionals. Um, that would be my biggest advice that, you know, just don't look at learning the tools and techniques because that's the easy part. Honestly, if you know one programming language, it's not you know, difficult to learn any other programming languages. Um, I would say since high school, I have sort of switched from one programming language to the other and I've never found it hard. Um, so it's not about learning the tools. It's, it's about how to use those to, tools towards advising businesses. That, that's the key element that people should focus on. I think that's a great point and you explained it very well. And this seems to be the common thread across all my conversations on this topic. Uh, even Garima said that people need to, young people need to focus on learning the implementation of all the technology uh, that they're Absolutely. talking. And yeah. uh, do you think this is something that we're lacking in India particularly? You've been, a, 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 a lot of your education has happened in the US. Do you think this is something peculiar to India? Is, is that what we're lacking here specifically? Uh, I think uh, partly because, you know, uh, we, we focus a lot on academics here in India. This is a great thing. Honestly, you know, uh, my education at IIT, I was very privileged to go to that institute and it, it was based uh, on the US model of education. So it was a very different environment from what you would get in any other institute, regular institute in India. Uh, and the difference basically is being very self-reliant when it comes to learning and being able to communicate your learning as well. And that, that plays a key, right? When, whenever you are talking to a business, you are doing analysis for them, eventually you have to say what everything means. And that is, um, I wouldn't say people are poor at understanding what they have done, but when it comes to communicating to a business and making sure the business understands how they can use what they have done, that's, that's the lacuna, that's the gap essentially. Uh, so we, we don't pay a lot of emphasis on uh, building our uh, you know, uh, children in, into good speakers and good communicators. Uh, and that is one thing that we should really focus on. Communication here is not the ability to speak a language well. No. Specifically English. It exactly. is being able to communicate your point across. I met so many people who, who have, you know, I wouldn't say they would have excellent grammatical skills but they are excellent in you know, inspiring others, in communicating a story. It's all about the story you can communicate that, you know, that resonates with the people who are listening to you. Correct. And uh, that's very critical. Consulting is, is not just data numbers. It also, it's about stories and inspiration. And, and exactly. just, just like the emotions that people can connect with and understand. Mm -hmm. So you have to boil it down to that level. I think even in McKenzie, there is this famous phrase, so what? You, you told me these hundred things, so what? What do I do with this, yeah. right? So yeah. it's, it's very important. Now I've received a question uh, from a professor of computer science and engineering who is interested in pursuing a career in AI and data science and mm -hmm. wants, wants to know what are the career opportunities available in the next three to five years. Do you want to help me answer that for him? If you look at my profile, right, I was uh, using our Python SQL towards a very different end when I was at Intel. Um, and I was using it towards product and process optimization, essentially. Uh, 
but when i came to india i sort of made a switch of my career as well and i realized being on the business side of things i need to understand how to use these tools towards business analytics which is why that you know uh, course from isd that i took up which really helped me understand how to sort of uh, realign what i know towards business analytics i think computer science engineering again you know this person might be in the same situation as i had been wherein i was using tools and technologies towards a different end and i needed to align those towards a different end uh, so i would say that you know get some education in into how to use i'm sure this person knows all all the possible coding languages that are there to learn and would be very you know proficient with any kind of tool given to this person but uh, to how to use it towards business analytics and the insights part that i was talking about earlier how to you know uh, make sure that whatever analysis you are doing is useful for a business too because businesses could be taking million dollar decisions on on the single statement that you give to them right uh, post your analysis uh, so of aligning all your knowledge towards that would be critical if one wants to get into real you know business analytics i would say data science is also a part of and ai is also part of business analytics essentially if you want to advise businesses i think that's a great answer but one part of his question is also to highlight the career opportunities for the next 3 to 5 years which is which is something that a lot of people are interested in so uh, uh, let me reframe that um, what okay. kind of roles again let's not talk about gartner i understand you're not in a position to speak freely about that but if you could broadly highlight the kind of positions that people can get into um it, just this like broad positions so just to give them perspective oh, this is where you can head to sure i mean the uh, the immediate alignment of uh, his you know knowledge base i would be uh, i would feel would be in uh, the area of data engineering because it's all about crunching huge and big data sets coming in um and then uh, what else data, data science surely but you know data science gets into the realm of advising businesses too if if this person wants to get into doing something exceptional within the next 3 years which is a very short span honestly then data engineering is where this person could you know hope to get an opportunity another very popular uh, query uh, question especially amongst youngsters um, you know as mm -hmm. we said the ai is so it seems so interesting to and everybody today a lot mm -hmm. of people want to get into it now one more question that i get a lot is that i am a graduate in a non cs field of engineering but i want to do a masters in ai which i am assuming is to get into a career then now you mm -hmm. you are someone who's had a very good education in in this field so you are i think better suited to answer that and they say that uh, india in india a masters program programs do not uh, accept non cs people so we have a real problem there now i am not a computer science graduate but uh, you know i did manage to get into isb they have a whole selection mechanism in place uh, so it's not that a non cs people cannot learn ai uh, but i do uh, observe a lot of people who have absolutely no uh, mathematics statistics or engineering background trying to get into ai uh, i hate to you know uh, <laughs> disappoint them but unfortunately the way our education system is set up uh, people with such backgrounds would find it very hard to break into the field of ai they they should have at least some experience with uh, the tools and technologies right uh, while i said that tools and technologies are not the only thing but they they are the thing that enable uh, ai uh, so you would need to know uh, how to use those uh, but anything like you know uh, operations engineering industrial engineering um, computer science electrical um i think in iits all all the fields like i was from material science and engineering we were required to get into coding i've i've done a lot of coding in matlab uh, during my phd days as well um so engineering math sciences uh, these the statistics statistics is very very important uh, all these fields uh, would align very well with the field of ai um and then would would you give similar advice to anybody who's trying to make a switch into ai um i think we talked about something similar earlier where you said that they could get into one such program like you did 
Absolutely. I mean, getting into a program helps you understand what what you are playing with, right? Uh, as to what the industry demand is like, and eventually, you know, uh, these these platforms are also good for networking because then you get to know who are the experts in AI data science, uh, so that in the future, because these fields are developing every day and they're changing every day. So keeping up with it is very hard. It's good to stay connected with experts in the field because they are also keeping up with the field uh, all the time. So anytime you, uh, I need an advice, I could go to one of my professors at ISB to ask for advice. So the, these platforms give you that flexibility, which is a good thing. I've had to think about aligning my career quite a bit, right? So I, I have explored myself to understand where I want to go in the Indian market. I would say that at Garima's insistence, I, I got into that data science program. It wasn't by my own volition that, that I went there. She was like, this is a good program. You should try for it. So I tried for it. Uh, and it was the best advice I could have got. Uh, for my career. We have so many of these uh, newer programs uh, coming up. Uh, what do you think, you know, sitting in your position, where do you think this is headed? Do you, do you see a lot of these good programs coming up in India? Uh, any particular programs that you would uh, advise, advise to a, a younger people, you know, some particularly good ones that they should consider um, if they want to get, get a good head start? See, uh, data science, and data scientist is touted as uh, the next big thing, right? In, in terms of uh, jobs and job creation in the job market, which is why you see way too many uh, courses available out there. Uh, I see two months course or do this one certification and you'll be an expert that <laughs> it is not that easy. Uh, someone who's committed to it would need to get into the application aspect of it can't happen in a matter of two to three months. Uh, but, you know, uh, if somebody already is in a job where, you know, they need to apply and one quick certification would help them improve what they're doing at their job, then those certifications make sense, those two, three month certifications. But if you are really, like you said, right, some, some people are not in the field of AI already and they want to align to the field of AI, then they have to go for a longer uh, you know, coursework, make sure that they know and understand how they have to implement the different models out there. It's, it's not that straightforward. So either you are getting experience on your job and want to quickly align to certain skills, and that's where those two, three month certifications make sense. Or if you are making a complete career alignment or, or shift, then you will have to go in for a longer course. And there are quite a few longer courses available in India. I would recommend the ISP course that I went through. It was pretty good. They have a good set of professors out there. Uh, you know, I'm Bangalore offers a very good coursework as well. Uh, well there are quite a few. I'm Bangalore. That, that's got a, yeah, that's got a good analytics course as well. Uh, so these are the two I was gunning for after I did some research. Uh, but unfortunately, the I am Bangalore one had closed off for admissions by the time I went in for it. So I went for ISB and I have no regrets. It, it was a good experience overall. To, to close this one final question I have, which mm -hmm. is uh, I'd like to you know, talk to you about the future of jobs in this field. Uh, you know, where do you see where do you see this going? Uh, what kind of talent do you do you think has the maximum uh, you know scope to come in? Any mm -hmm. uh, final final thoughts? See, the scope is tremendous. Like I said, and especially post COVID, right? Given all the remote work, a lot of businesses uh, have not been able to uh, manage brick and mortar presence. So they have also digitized themselves with all digit the digitization that's happening, right? What comes is also a lot of data being collected. Uh, and a lot of businesses have realized that this not might not be a one-off case, this COVID situation, right? It, there's a new normal that is coming our way. Uh, and most businesses will tend towards digitization. And that would also uh, mean a lot of opportunities of analytics on the data that they are collecting uh, because everybody is looking to build efficiencies, grow their business, uh, you know, compete uh, by knowing what the other competitors are doing. And data-driven insights are becoming very key. 
uh, also because you know the cycle for strategy has shortened from say five years people used to build five year plans that is no longer the case strategy cycle has shortened quite a bit so people need to take very quick decisions and humanly it's not possible to take such quick decisions right because the market is changing all the time so data driven decision making is becoming important day by day because of that so data is coming in by the volumes data driven decision is not going anywhere uh, there's a lot of opportunity out there for uh, data analytics ai and data science uh, so i see a lot of scope building in the post covid era that we are in uh, it's just that now we uh, have to make sure that you know we are prepared for it uh, when it comes to knowing the tools and technologies um adapting to the tools and technologies because they are constantly changing as well uh having that open mind to ad adapt constantly and then eventually uh, you know when it comes to insights of course like i said uh, that that's a gap that we feel is still there in the market because a lot of people are just thinking about using tools and technologies but to what end that's the part that people should focus on if i may sneak in one last question uh, because something that you said reminded me about you know uh, remote working uh, and mm -hmm. i read in uh, the economic times today said that uh, 35% of uh, hiring uh, has been shifted to uh, you know locations which are remote uh, meaning uh, you know places where there are the companies don't have offices they are be they are being able to hire from that so do you mm -hmm. think the sheer digital nature of this field um, makes it um, makes jobs you know hiring very democratized you know in that sense do you think this is one of those fields uh, yes. which um, adds uh, you know which gives a, a lot of opportunity to people living in tier 2 tier 3 cities as well absolutely i think the field mm -hmm. of IT and it is very similar to the field of IT, right? You can sit anywhere and crunch data as long as you have a system that can keep up with it and and a network that can keep up with it. So hopefully, with the other infrastructure also upgrading itself, remote work for this field will also help because uh, no matter what you you need a very good system, you know, running AI models. Uh, and mostly people run it on servers so given the infrastructure being in place and upgrading itself and keeping up with the, the remote environment that we have uh it definitely democratizes uh, the way people are seeking jobs getting jobs i mean it it's not uncommon from for other geographies i mean i get hit ups on linkedin quite a bit from other geographies that you are free to work from india but you know uh, i'm sitting here in brazil so uh, are you uh, up for it <laughs> i'm still not up for it honestly speaking it feels a little weird for me being old school but these options are not now available which is a great thing thank you so much thank you so much shadha you know this it's such a delight and this was totally worth to wait <laughs> it was an absolute delight to meet you thank you so much for thank it. you so much have a good day and a good weekend bye you too bye